Hello everybody and welcome to Cosplaying Around. Today I want to talk to you a bit about unitard painting. This is something that's kind of near and dear to me. It's one of the main things that I have done in my cosplay career. For this particular painting we will be doing a cat style unitard. This is where I have most of my experience, although I will be frank with you, I have not painted one in three years. So this was very fun for me because it was uh, kind of a blast from the past and also reminded me that practice is very important. Uh, you can't always just pick something up and it come out correctly, especially if it was something you weren't always that great at to begin with. With that said, um, you will need to buy textile paints. I usually get these from dickblick.com. I'm not going to tell you that's the best price because really, I never price checked it. Uh, I haven't bought paint in a really long time. I bought these a year ago for a completely different project, so I almost didn't have enough to finish what I started. But I bought it from there whenever I was younger. I've just kind of stuck with it because I know that I'm going to get reliable service and in the past if something went wrong they were very quick to fix it so they have a little bit of my loyalty. I do have to say that if you are going to make an order from there make a large purchase because the shipping price is going to be kind of expensive no matter what it's usually around 12 or 13 dollars so if you only need five dollars worth of paint it, please consider looking on ebay or somewhere where you might be able to get a better deal so today i'm going to be painting a cat's unitard on a single seam unitard you might not know what that is it's kind of something that I don't think a lot of people know unless you're in a very specific kind of cosplay. Cat's cosplay does not necessarily require a single seam unitard. By any means at all, you could do side seams, you could do front seams, it doesn't really matter. But single seam is the most quote-unquote authentic as that is the type that they use in the actual show. Single seam is a little bit of a misnomer because there's obviously going to be more than one seam. You have to put arms on it. But it only has one seam running down the back and the seam continues on down both of the legs so there is no seam on the sides. So then the only visible seam that's not on the back on the armholes. So it's very useful for quite a few things. I always love to bring up how Kat's cosplay aesthetics are useful in other ways. And this particular one is great if you're wanting to do a body painted character, but you don't want to have to body paint yourself every time. For instance, a female titan, a male titan actually, uh, it's just that they print some of those. I don't know if they print the female titans or not. A Navi from Avatar, and I'm sure there's multiple, multiple other examples such as um, Mystique. Mystique is a wonderful one as well. These single seam unitards can better emulate body paint than a seamed unitard because you, well, don't have a seam to worry about in the front and or the sides. And the seam in the back generally tends to be, you don't really notice it because you're not, your back is not going to be the focal point in photographs, generally speaking. So uh, it's great for that. The only thing is, I do have to say, it is much easier to paint one flat. This was my first time doing it. I very much enjoyed it. It can be a little bit tricky if you have specific areas they need to go in, such as accentuating breasts. But uh, for this, it was fantastic. And uh, I would recommend it to anybody. So, one thing I have to say, they are a little tricky to make. I have made a few. I have not yet perfected the method. I do have to say they are easier to make for men than they are for women. This is because men are square shaped, women are not. For instance, my measurements are 36, 30, 43. So you're going to notice in these pictures, my unitard looks a little funny. It looks better once it's sewn up and we're going to see if it fits correctly next week. So for now, let's go over what we're doing. To start off, I lay down the unitard on plastic bags, specifically garbage bags in this instance, 
people use cork boards and plastic bags and all that stuff. I, I just put down the garbage bags on the ground and went at it. It backfired a little bit because some of the paint underneath got a little tacky because it was against that plastic for so long, but that's something, a lesson that I've learned. I used to always paint my unitards on sheets, which was actually because I was 14 and just painted it on top of my bed. But uh, you're going to want to protect whatever you're painting on top of. If you want to use old sheets, that's probably going to be fantastic. So I start off using a very light gray and a natural sponge to create some gray splotches. Cat's costuming is all about textures and colors. So you're going to want to try and get as much of that as you can without making it look hectic. I actually did not put enough base layer down, not as much as what I wanted for my end goal. At the end it still turns out okay, but it's not really what I was looking for. So I put down the gray. My camera cuts off, as it will do, and you don't get to see everything, not that you really necessarily need to. Then we move on to the markings. You're going to always want to start off with your lightest colors first. So I go with a lighter orange. This was tricky because I did not purchase an orange because once again I did not actually buy this paint for this project. I go over it with a angled brush and just go at it. That's really all I could say. I do not make plans ahead of time. It's actually a very good idea to do so. I just really like freestyling. I <laughs> like the way that it makes me think and I get a picture in my head and I know what I'm going for so we go from there. So you'll kind of notice as I'm doing it I sort of mark out where exactly the markings are going to go and follow it from there. Uh, my camera did not get this, but I then took the paint that I had and put it in a spray bottle, watered it down really, really well, and sprayed more of this orange all over the unitard, allowing some drizzles and some nice, beautiful sprays. Uh, this, I wish I'd done more, actually, because I really wanted more orange underneath, but I was afraid of having too much orange because I also wanted the gray and the white. Lesson learned. It's all you can do is really experiment and see where it goes. After this, I mix a darker orange because this has to match that wig that I made for you guys uh, a couple months ago. That orange has a lot of red in it and is very much very burnt and I wanted it to, it needs to match. That's the long and the short of it. It needs to match. So I go and I mix some reddish orange and water it down a little bit more than the other orange so it'll almost do a little bit of a watercolor effect. And then I go over that, over the stripes, until it seeps in and you get a really nice color. After that, we go to the black. This is the part I always dread anytime I make a cat's costume. It's simultaneously the most fun part and the most nerve-wracking. I have a bad habit of cutting my black a little too much, meaning I dilute the textile paint with a little bit too much Dynaflow or water. In this instance, I had to be particularly careful because I only had one pot of black did not buy it for this costume, and a large pot of colorless extender. The problem is you can still only use so much colorless extender before it dilutes the black, and I needed to cut it with water also to make it thin enough to go through the bottle correctly. Sometimes I cut it too much, and sometimes I didn't cut it enough, and most of the time I just used way too much paint. I used a plastic tip bottle. Honestly, I have bought metal tip bottles in the past, and they are worth buying. I mostly did not get them for this project because I had last minute planned to do this. I got really excited about it and kind of let that overcome my logic and reasoning. You can order those off of dickblick.com whenever you order your textile paints. The metal tip bottles are going to help a lot because it makes a smaller surface and you're not going to have as much blotching as you're going to see on mine. That's also caused by the fact that I get overexcited and I just scribble everywhere. I've only made a small handful of costumes that actually used the squeeze bottle for the black because I was very stubborn whenever I was younger and refused to use one. So I'm really not used to it. However, the end result I'm still very happy with. I'm going to be sewing that up next week whenever I write my article on how to make a 
a single seam unitard, although it's really a little bit more of a follow along because I'm not going to tell you exactly how to make one because I don't really know exactly how to make one. A little bit of a hit or miss, but we're going to see if I did a good job and it fits correctly. I think that it will, but we'll find out and we'll see that next week here at the Culture Cache. I hope to see you guys and uh, have a great day. Bye.